In this video, I'm looking at PAG6, Synthesis of an Organic Solid. So the skills covered in the PAG include purification by recrystallization, filtration under reduced pressure, use of melting point apparatus, use of thin layer chromatography, risk assessment, and heating under reflux. And because I've already covered those last two in PAG 5, I'm not actually going to include them in this video. So I'm just concentrating on the first four skills. So what I've done is I've made this task based around a preparation of aspirin, which is obviously an organic solid, and I've set three little tasks associated with it. So this is the first one. Um, so aspirin can be made by refluxing 2-hydroxy benzoic acid with ethanoic anhydride in the presence of a concentrated acid catalyst. So here's the equation for that reaction. This is the aspirin here. And we're told some extra information. Aspirin is more soluble in hot water than cold. And the typical percentage yield for this method is 85.5%. So the first task is to outline a plan to prepare 8.40 grams of pure aspirin and in your answer work out the mass of the 2-hydroxy benzoic acid needed and outline the purification steps from the hot reaction mixture. So if you want to have a go at that now, pause the video and then play on when you're ready for the answers. So we'll start with the mass required of the 2-hydroxybenzoic acid. So the first thing you'd need to do is calculate the MR of aspirin. So that comes out at 180. And then the moles of aspirin required, remember we need to make 8.4 grams of aspirin. So mass over MR gives us that many moles. So now we need to work out how many moles of 2-hydroxybenzoic acid are needed. But remember, it's not 100% yield. If it was 100%, would mean that would need that many moles of, of the 2-hydroxybenzoic acid. So the factor in the percentage yield, we divide by the percentage yield and then multiply by 100. That will factor that in. And so we're going to actually need 0 0.0546 moles of starting material. And now we can turn that into a mass by multiplying by its MR, which is 138. So 7.53 grams are required. So now we'll talk about the purification from the hot reaction mixture once the reaction is taking place. And I've just put a reminder there of the extra information. Aspirin is much more soluble in hot water than cold. So the first thing we'd do is we'd cool the reaction mixture and then filter under reduced pressure using Buchner apparatus. So that's what this diagram is here. So this is the Buchner funnel and we've got the filter paper here. So the sample would go under the filter paper and this is connected to a special type of flask with a sidearm in that you connect to a vacuum pump which actually sort of it's a more efficient way of filtering because the lower pressure sort of pulls the liquid through. That's a much faster way of filtering. So once you've done that, you then recrystallize your impure aspirin by dissolving in the minimum amount of hot water. So we're building in this information, this extra information. We then allow that to cool and let the crystals reform and then the crystals that reform are purer than the original ones, the impure ones. So the impurities stay in the solution. And again, we would once we've once we've got a solid, we would then filter again under reduced pressure, so using the Buchner apparatus. And then the final thing we'd do is we should be washing the purified aspirin using cold water now because, remember, it's not very soluble in cold water. So we don't want to lose any of our product. 
So that task there has tested the first two skills, the recrystallization and the filtering under reduced pressure. So if we move on to testing the purity now using melting point determination, so the student has decided to carry out a melting point determination to determine the purity of the aspirin made. And some extra information, melting point range for pure aspirin is 138 to 140 degrees Celsius. Outline the steps for the procedure, explain how the results can give an indication of the purity of the sample. So again, if you want to pause the video now, have a think about what you would need to say and then play on for the answers. So there's at the bottom is a reminder of the melting point range for pure aspirin. We'll be referring to that at the end of this. So I've got a series of photos that I've taken in the lab at college here and I'll talk through them now. So the first thing you need to do is place a small amount of your aspirin in a melting point tube. So this is representing the aspirin on the filter paper from the Buckner funnel and you can see hopefully a small very thin glass tube that's the melting point tube and you can see hopefully that there's a tiny amount there in the bottom of the tube and you basically just do that by prodding gently the um, glass tube the open end of the glass tube under your sample and it starts to collect in the bottom there this is the melting point apparatus that we've got at college so what I've done there you'll notice the temperature is 130 so what I've done is I've set, it's called the ramping temperature of the melting point apparatus, several degrees below the melting point of aspirin. So aspirin melts over this range, 138 to 140. So I've set that at 130. Basically what's going to happen now is this heats up very, very quickly and stops at 130. And then it's very, very gradual once it gets to the whatever you set as the ramping temperature. So you then would insert your sample into the melting point apparatus. So remember, this is going to heat very, very slowly now. So you don't want to overshoot the melting point or miss the melting point. And then when you look down this viewing port here, this is actually what you see. And hopefully you can see that in this tube here, the sample's actually melted. So you would record the range over which the sample melts. So you'll notice it starts to melt, so you'd record that temperature, and then when it's completely melted, you record the final temperature. So that's your melting point range. And how would the student therefore determine the purity? Impurities lower the melting point, so you'd expect a melting point lower than 138, and it would melt over a wide range impurities lower melting point and widen the melting range so you can see here pure aspirin melts over a small two degrees c range whereas impure aspirin will melt over a wider range and obviously the wider the range the more impure it's going to be so for the final part of the task, we're going to look at the testing for purity using thin layer chromatography. So just imagine a different student decided to test the purity of aspirin by TLC. So we need to outline the steps for the procedure and explain how the results can give an indication of the purity of the sample. And some extra information, RF values for pure 2-hydroxybenzoic acid and for pure aspirin. Now, when I go through the answers, I've had a go at drawing the um, what the TLC would look like. And so if you want to have a think about that, and then that's obviously going to give us something to talk about in terms of um, how the student can uh, tell how pure their aspirin is. So for the last time, if you want to pause the video and then play on when you're ready. So the first thing the student's going to need to do is draw a pencil line near the bottom of their TLC plate. And then they're going to run three chromatograms, one for 2-hydroxybenzoic acid, one for pure aspirin, and the third one for the impure aspirin, the one they've made. 
They're going to mark the position the solvent reaches in pencil again. That's called the solvent front. And then they're going to compare the positions or the RF values of the spots for the impure aspirant with the, those two pure substances. So this is what I've drawn to sort of explain all of that. So there's the baseline the, where the samples start out. There's the solvent front. And you'll see I've measured the distance there in millimetres, that's 78 millimetres. Um, I've said that the two hydroxybenzoic acids gone there, the impure aspirin's there, pure aspirin's here. So why have I drawn this spot here for two hydroxybenzoic acid 23 millimetres up from the baseline? Well, it's all due to the RF value. Remember that's 0 0.3. So I've multiplied the... Um, distance travelled by the solvent by the RF value to get the distance that the spot's going to travel by. And so it's about 23 millimetres for that one. Same method gives me 58 millimetres for the pure aspirin. So the student hasn't made pure aspirin. There's going to be impurities in there, which is likely to be some 2-hydroxybenzoic acid that's left over. So they're likely to see a spot at the same RF value as pure aspirin, so they've obviously made some aspirin, but they've also got some traces of impurities, and you'll notice that I've drawn a faint spot there, rather than a sort of um, more pronounced spot, and that's trying to get across the idea that it's um, a small amount of impurities.